Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at the first in Michigan Northwest Championships, checking in with 11228 overclocked box. Uh, this team has had been phenomenal throughout the season so far. We've been able to check in with them the last couple seasons as well too. A lot of great things that go into this robot here. Uh, I absolutely love this turret design that they're using for it. You gotta check this out. Not only is it super fast and efficient for things, the vision has been great, but the way that this detaches and their assembly goes together for this is something you really need to pay attention to. So let's dive more into what really, what really makes this robot just tick so well coming up here on Behind the Vine. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. FRCTs has been trusted by over 200 first teams to save on custom shirts and team apparel. Founded by first alumni and offering a free 14-day turnaround with faster options available, your team can apply for a sponsorship and get a quote when you scan the QR code or go to FRCTs.com. Oliver, let's dive right into this robot here. Tell me more about what makes it work so well. We got to start just kind of with that artifact journey. So let's go with this intake and a few other great attributes that you have here. Yeah, of course. So uh, we start with the uh, custom made funnels. We decided this um, by figuring out what angle would be the best without uh, uh, disrupting what we could intake on the far side. So we come here with the rubber band intake and this expands out when it's actually initialized. And we um, pick it up through here and it usually is pretty fast. After we go through there, can you uh, lift it up? Perfect. So now we get the, uh, this is our transfer mechanism. So we have a belt right here, moving it through. And then we have a kicker up top that is um, sp uh, spring loaded and it pops it up into our shooter that we'll show later. And uh, we figured this out through a lot of prototyping with a, um, a one side belt and just a wall on the other side to help it funnel fast. And uh, we have these two braces on the bottom to help it flow through without it um, rolling too much and that has really helped it be efficient. You know, you talked about how you uh, came up with kind of a different way to make sure that the uh, artifacts don't jam and that sort of thing. Are there any other key difficulties that your team faced and how did you overcome them as you uh, continue to make your robot, at least based on the front end of the bot? Yeah, so we, um, previously we had a coupler on a shaft to connect these two right here. And uh, we changed that, we added a, um, we also added a um, brace because our intake snapped once in our competition because it was uh, two weeks. So we added a brace here and uh, changed the angles on our intake to make sure that two balls can fit in uh, without uh, it needing to be um, moved in and out again. As you're testing different rollers in your bot, um, what made you come up with like doing more of this rubber band area on that? Like why, why was that successful versus some of the other things that you tested? Um, so we decided a rubber band roller because it one it expands to give us that compression that we really like. It also it funnels on its own. We see how um, it's kind of offset. It's um, angled this way so that it will always feed it in, I don't know, moving alongside with these uh, funnels. So it always moves in, and it's really fast on the center as well. Pass over to Simon and talk more about this awesome turret and shooter that you're having about. We got a little sneak peek out when you opened it up on there, but I love the dive more into that too, because when we were talking earlier, you said it's just a couple bolts and that whole assembly comes right off. And I just love that sort of design. Tell me more about it. Yeah, so we decided to do that because during our judges presentation, yeah, we only take off a few bolts. We can tilt it up and we can allow them to see all of the transfer and all the components and mechanisms inside there. That allows us to be able to fix our robot really, really quickly. And if we need to access any of the components or mechanisms inside our robot, like if a, some bolts come loose, we that allows us to that allows us to open this up, and then we can access, we can prop it up and access anything we want, kind of like the hood on a car. And it allows us to see these gate rollers on the bottom of the turret, and they rotate with the turret, and that allows and that goes suck the ball into the turret and gives us a really consistent shot. It gives us a really consistent shot and allows us to uh, shoot the same distance every single time that we want. And uh, and uh, our shooter consists of a flywheel and a hood. And the flywheel is powered by two motors. That gives us a faster acceleration for the flywheel. And uh, it's, we have two rubbery wheels that gives us a wider grip on the ball. And if we are off a little bit, it'll still grip it and shoot it perfectly fine. We, our hood can move up and down on this rack and pinion gear back here, and we, and uh, you can't really see it, but the, these two standoffs, the top and the bottom, are actually steel, 
so they they get, keep the hood a lot more stiff while, it's, while we're shooting and it, that allows us to have a so, good solid um, consistent compression and uh, yeah I gotta ask you on your uh, your adjustable uh, hood that you have in here. We see a lot of teams are coming up with a lot of different designs for that. Many of them are more that wider uh, hood for it. Did you notice any loss in accuracy or anything like that by going with more of a skinnier uh, design here? And can you just tell me a little bit about how you went through the testing for that? Yeah, we did a lot of prototyping and uh, it, we found out that as long as we hug the ball and keep it centered while it's coming into the shooter, like if our hood is all the way raised up, we don't need, we don't need to have it guide guided on top and that allowed us to be a lot easier to design this hood and make it make it how compact and how easy easy it can adjust really easy. Uh, let's pass over to Micah and talk more about some of the controls on this. We mentioned before that you've had tremendous success with your limelight on there but you've got some other great sensors that are functioning on your bot too. I'd love to hear more about it. Um, yeah we'll start at the bottom first. We have this tiny little distance sensor in our intake here so that tells us when we have an in, uh, artifact in our intake. So whenever we have an artifact in our intake, it will like send out like um, telemetry data to us, and we can see um, whether we have all three balls in our intake, so we can, that we can like reduce the uh, um, the risk of penalties in our matches. We also have uh, can you lift it up real quick? We also have a little distance sensor back in the back of the robot that we can use to see if we have an artifact all the way in the back of the robot. So if we don't, then we don't waste time shooting it in auto. Um, and then moving on to like the main thing, we have our limelight camera. We use this a lot to mainly prioritize being able to shoot from anywhere on the field, which was one of our main goals this season, so that we could reduce the um, what would happen if we were getting defended against and so that we could just have consistency all over the field and make most of our shots. So we use this, um, we programmed it by adding a distance calculation and adding like calculations to keep it um, like centered on the goal so that we could consistently shoot from anywhere on the field no matter where we are. Can you just explain a little more how you do some of your uh, modification process to like getting your limelight lined up and uh, getting your turret so accurate? Um, so yeah, in our we spent a ton of time tuning our distance calculations specifically, making sure that we had our distances correct, and like we created a lookup table so that we could um, say if we are like 55 inches away from this, we want to shoot at around this speed, um, and like if we're in a midpoint, then we shoot uh, like between 55 and 50 or so. Um, and so this really helped us being able to be accurate. Um, we also like did a ton of tuning with our turret to make sure that we were aiming at the correct spot on the goal every single time so that we like aimed correctly every single time no matter what. And can you just run me through like maybe what's what's one of your key autonomous modes that you run into that you've seen a lot of success with here? Um, our main auto that we run is a auto that opens up the gate after scoring our three preloads and then scores roughly nine more artifacts. We um, use the uh, the distance sensor in the back to like make sure that if we only had two in the robot we didn't spend too much time waiting to shoot that third one even though we didn't have it and that really helped us just be able to be consistent and like get a ton of points during auto. By the way, we talked about some different iterations on your robot, but I'd love to hear just some of this prototyping process, how your team went through that. Anything from a strategy wise, especially coming into like, how did you even like come up with this in the first place? That sort of thing. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so from the beginning of the season, we've put a lot of effort into making sure that our strategy is adaptable for everyone that we would want to play with. So we, at the beginning of the season, went through the game, whether we wanted to go with motifs or just slamming as many artifacts as we could get in the goal as possible. We mainly went with that second strategy of making sure that we could score as much as possible so that we could mainly focus on that because it does score more points at the end of the day. And then basically for end game, we currently in between our last qualifier in states, we integrated basically a tipper that tips our robot up a little bit, not allowing a full park unless our partner has something. It's right in the bottom in there. It doesn't allow full park, but it does give our partner a whole lot more room to get in, especially if they have another tipper. Those work very cohesively. And then for prototyping at the beginning of the season, we decided that we wanted our intake to be as fast as possible. So we put a lot of effort into testing different rollers and different like strengths of rubber bands once we decided on that. And then for our shooter, we worked on do we want a turret, basically that power adjustability section, and then what kind of wheels that we would want. 
And then for our transfer, we worked at like, do we want to push it up or to have them in a row and have our shooter move? So that was an idea that we had at the beginning of the season just to have our shooter move and have the balls to stay stationary and then our kicker move with the shooter. And we eventually strayed away from that because we decided that we wanted to have it like this so that we can move the balls quicker than we can move a shooter. And that's working more on the mechanical side than just having luck to make sure they move in the right way. I never thought I'd have a conversation about rubber band barometer before, but that's always a fun thing to go through. Uh, the last thing I just want to ask you is, you know, when you looked at when the game first came out for it, was this general design kind of like what you initially came up with or what were maybe some other wacky ideas that your team had? Yeah, so we had a lot of ideas other than the turret too. So we thought about a catapult a little bit and just some kind of weird things of different ways to integrate the turret. We thought of having multiple shooters um, that were catapults or having more of a hooded shooter that's not a turret. And then for our intake, we went through a lot of different iterations just of like everything we could possibly think of. We went through flaps. Um, our final two designs that we were deciding between were flaps and this rubber band design that we have now. And the reason why we went with the rubber band design is because the flaps made it so we would go outside the 18 by 18. And because the rest of our robot is so complex, we didn't have enough room to basically smush everything down. We did try to work around that because we wanted to do flaps. And we are very happy that we ended up going with the rubber bands because it's been very successful this season. Yeah, obviously we're going to create a 113 OPR coming into this event as well. One of the favorites here, I'm sure. And so we wish you best of luck. Thanks for telling us about this awesome breakdown. It's always a pleasure to, to bump back into your team, but I always get to talk to new students every single year through Team 2, which I think is great. Overclock bots, congratulations on a great year. Good luck here at States and thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. FRCTs has been trusted by over 200 first teams to save on custom shirts and team apparel. Founded by first alumni and offering a free 14-day turnaround with faster options available, your team can apply for a sponsorship and get a quote when you scan the QR code or go to frcts.com. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.